Okay, so hello everyone again. This is Candace Craw Goldman, and this is a Facebook Live edition of Quantum Healing with Candace. And I'm here today with my really wonderful, happy, special friends, Ron Amit and Michael James Garber. And they are here to give us an update on everything going on with the event, some crazy things that are happening, some energy things. Some really interesting stories. They started to tell me this wonderful, mm -hmm. wild story right before we were on air. And I was like, no, 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 stop. Save that story for our <laughs> listeners. So hi, Ron. Hi, Michael. Thank you for being with me today. Fill us in. What's going on? Mm. So it was really, um, there's so much going on, actually. And everyone's experiences are so unique. We've been getting lots of messages um, through our different ways of contacting us, of from people all over the world that are having very similar experiences. Um, mostly a lot of tiredness, a lot of emotions coming up, which seem to have some themes um, for some people. Of, there's some jealousy themes coming up, some anger stuff, some rage, a lot of heart work being done, which is then also manifesting with issues with the lungs and then also in the throat as well. Um, you can hear mine. <laughs> um, mine? <laughs> and also surges of energy coming in um, just kind of periodically as things are getting um, upgraded and repaired. So what we were told is that the shadows, the limitations, these old, this old stuff that's been stored in our DNA is being um, repaired. And what this one client, what came to this one client was that we're returning to what he called our Adamic human form the original divine form that was able to live as long as it wanted and was a more um, joyful, radiant body. So that's super exciting. I'm getting goosebumps as I talk about it. <laughs> so you're talking about the Adam, the Adam, Cad, Adam Cadam, Cadmic body. I'm going to get that wrong. There's something about that. I, I have a little bit of something wrong with the spelling. That's amazing. So what they were saying is that we're returning, and also the earth herself is returning back to the original blueprint that this was designed to be, this like incredible garden. They even called it the master garden because so much has been taken from different star systems and brought here to earth. So yeah. it's a really special part of creation that we get to walk and sing and dance upon. So this is really exciting. But what, I, what you were referring to was I had a similar experience. It, um, some people may have heard about the eye that we had talked about coming in February on the 22nd, um, which was the beginning of these energy waves, um, which I had a really wild multidimensional experience where I was being told about my upgrades. I felt my energy bodies being separated and they began to take parts of my energy field apart and put new programs, new templates over top. And then were giving me all kinds of information, but so a month, like a, a week ago, actually, we came to visit a friend here in Portland because we were doing sessions here. And um, I just felt this urge that I needed to go a day early. And um, so we came a day early. And when we got here um, a little bit later, we were called upstairs because she was having an episode. And um, it, when I came into the room, she was shaking. She was convulsing, mm -hmm. like almost like a, like a grandma seizure, but she was totally conscious while it was happening. Um, and able to have conversations with us. And then, so I just kind of held her as if, if anyone's ever been um, working with any plant medicines or had experiences with people that have been going through some type of experience where you have to hold space for them. Um, so I just, I came up behind her, I put her in my legs and I held her, we sang to her mm -hmm. and just, um, we're just, you know, we weren't sure exactly what to do. So we basically just felt that we need to hold space and to bring positive energy around her. We held her crown and we started to do energy healing work for her feet. Just holding space while everything is shaking, trying to understand a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Michael worked with her before, so they had a keyword that we can use to put her into trance. Mm -hmm. So basically what they started to share with us is that they were igniting her cells and that she needed to wake up. She had a lot of work to do. And um, what they described later, because we did another QHHT session the next day, um, was that they needed to basically smack her awake. They needed <laughs> to get her to pay attention. And this was their way of like, get your life, you know, aligned and start focusing on this work more. 
And um, during this process, we were guided to keep her fed and keep her hydrated. So the heat that was coming off of her body was really, really intense. She had pneumon like a pneumonia that was setting in uh, prior to this um, and some issues with her lungs uh, from a moldy um, where she had been around mold a few months ago. And so they were basically burning it off of her lungs and um, opening her up. They said that she would cough for one more day and that, that she would be fine after. And the next day she was like a light bulb. <laughs> Like she was just so excited. So what I think what's important to share is that these spontaneous awakenings are going to be happening as these, as the energy and the frequency continues to rise. And so it's really important that we learn how to hold space for people as they're going through that, whether it's an experience like this, or it's just simply an emotion like rage coming up that needs to be held. We don't want to shame people for having emotions. We want to be able to place for them so they can have their experience because much is coming up and needs to you know, either go up or, or down, but it needs to go somewhere. <laughs> we don't need to hold it anymore. Um, yeah, it was exciting. Yeah. That's just amazing, uh, you know, this experience you had with this, with this woman. Um, how was her demeanor? You know, as I'm listening to you, I'm thinking, well, we as quantum healers might see what's going on there and react a little differently than let's say someone walking down the street who might call an ambulance or something. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how, how were her emotions in that regard? I mean, what was going on? And do you think, I mean, of course, but do you think it was time because you were there? Of course. But I mean, <laughs> what, what do you want to say about that? Yeah. I felt like a few things. One was that her mood was fine. She was totally fine. I mean, there were times where she, before I even used the keyword, she was being shown other timelines and visually she was getting a lot of, uh, she was seeing different periods that they were wanting to show her. And she would go out of kind of consciousness while she was seeing that or when they were speaking through her. Um, they did show her a uh, a pyramid with an eye in the center because I had asked if they were part of the eye and the eye is an ongoing visitation that started in February um, where there were these um, other beings are watching us. This is super fascinating throughout the universe what's happening on earth right now. So these what I would kind of call galactic scientists are observing humans as we shift and change and observing the DNA. So they did say that they were part of that that group uh, that's observing all of this. But she was fine. She was actually ecstatic. Um, like she was like experiencing so much joy as this energy was flowing through her, even though she was not. It was kind of combination. Because in one way it was intriguing because she was still there. So she was intrigued. But in the other, there was like very not comfortable. A lot of rage, she said. She felt mm -hmm. a lot of anger coming out of her, even though it was kind of, but then it felt like cleansing. It, it did. So there was like the understanding that it's okay that there's some kind of process that she's going through and she felt safe with us. So it was kind of uh, okay to go through it. Sure. Then, yeah. Well, I'm really glad that you talked about it like that because, you know, even when we've been talking about the event, there have been some people who've been saying, I'm afraid. I'm afraid about what's happening. I'm afraid about laying down and the world going by and everybody. I mean, you know, afraid of some of the different things that are talked about. So I'm glad that, that everything was under control with her and then gives people, you know, an idea that if something big were to happen to them too, it's probably going to be okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, we actually talked, we got information about that a lot of the trends, like, change is going to happen while people are sleeping so actually a lot of that not going to be felt it's just more like you're going to wake up and you're going to see that you're a little bit in a different situation and and i feel like this is later on we we have so much more to be awakened before really that big shift happening yeah. and there's a lot of process to go until then and a lot of work to do until then nothing is done yet we have so much work to do a lot yeah and I was just asked yesterday, we had an amazing session when they talked about the new earth and they actually described it. And we can share a little bit more about that in a second. Um, what do I want to say? Well, what was interesting about, let's say for this session, so we work with this woman a lot, especially about the energy waves and, um, 
and she's also we've been going back a lot to the life of Jesus um, in her regression part. Um, but then this time, you know, we left it really open. We asked, you know, we can go forward or back in time, and we went to a future life. And this one was on the new earth, about two or three hundred years in earth time from now. Um, and she was a beautiful blue winged being um, that was watching over this colony of humans that were on the new earth. And um, talking about visitations that were happening pretty periodically where ships were landing, humans were going on voluntarily because they were teaching the extraterrestrial races how to move like a human, speak like a human, behave like a human, which eventually became a way for these extraterrestrials to take human form and to come onto earth and to walk with humanity again. Um, so this was super exciting. And actually the, the idea of, um, of visitation has been coming up a lot. Um, I had another friend of mine who during the event that started in February, um, where she was being, she was still in her body and I had a similar experience, but she was also aware of an aspect of herself that was being worked on on a ship um, with other beings. And so I think this is gonna happen in different ways. We've also been getting pictures of people that have been seeing um, ships. And what they said about this is that as our vibration raises, as we release more and more fear and we, we get to a higher rate of vibrational frequency, we will start to see the ships and we start to see these other beings um, that have been maybe lost in our mythologies or folklore, but they're still here on earth and we're going to be able to start seeing them again. Yeah. Um, also the underground creatures. Yeah, the underground civilizations that were left over from maybe Lemuria or Atlantis that have been waiting for humanity to get to the point that we're choosing peace and, you know, embodying love. Um, but so what the other thing that they said was if you see a ship, then that you have a connection. Your soul has a connection to this race, and that this is why you're being able to see it. Um, so we are ex expecting, they said this month, more of these other beings that are here on Earth, these um, the cave dwellers is what they call, we would start to be able to see them. And I have had a friend who's reported seeing other beings out of her periphery. Um, so it's super, super exciting. <laughs> Um, wow! Now, are some of these are some of these like the Sasquatch people yeah. as well? Yeah, I yeah. Kind of thought so. I've had a session about that myself. So yeah. um, that's really great validation to hear that from you as well. Yeah. Such such great um, great stories you have. Well, continue. What else have you got? Yeah, we've got tons because we we did a bunch of research with some of our clients before we had this show, so we could give you guys as much information as we could. Um, it's been, you know, we've had to go through a lot to get in ourselves to be able to even speak about this stuff, you know, so publicly. And now that we've seen so many things starting to happen, um, we're ready to talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So the next thing, so the next wave that's coming is going to be on the 15th to the 22nd. They're really enjoying the number 22 right now. And the, so the 22nd is going to, if you've been seeing that number pop up all over the place, like I have been. Um, so this one they said is going to be stronger than the one that we just had this last month on the 22nd. Um, <laughs> the, the, there was no easy way to talk about this really other than they said this one's going to be stronger. Um, this is just to really make sure it's getting the work is being done. They said there may be feelings of insanity, um, oh, no. <laughs> uh, frustration, scattered minds, definitely exhaustion. This is going to be stronger. Um, but the, but after this week, a feeling of well-being, a feeling of burdens being lifted, um, just feeling... After much this lifted. week, she after, promised? After the 15th and the 22nd event, yeah. And again, I want to say about those numbers that I feel like also people have their own timeline. They might be like, it just seed that's going to be planted then and then the experience might be later on. Yeah. But... I would say you might gonna get a gift. You might open it up two weeks later. <laughs> Who knows? <so> it's, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, as I said, it's really important at this time to just, if you can, like lay low. Just don't force anything. Don't try to make anything happen if you're not feeling well. Just to just to take it easy. Drink lots of water. This is the big message: water, 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 water. Um, you know, eat clean, eat as clean as you can, organic, light, no animal products. They even said 
Oh my god. They even <laughs> said that they're not putting animals on the new earth right away because it's really important that we start out in harmony. Um, and that we, they don't want to confuse us and have us eating animals again. So they're going to wait for a while until <laughs> yeah. they might put birds on because of the beauty of their song. But at, right at first, they're going to just let humans just vibe in that new vibe for a bit. <laughs> yeah. And they mentioned that we're going to be able to remember a little bit of our past life. So then it can be confusing with eating animals because we were really used to eat a lot of animals here. So in the new earth, in the beginning, they just wanted to be, yeah, yeah, yeah just learning, learning, time to learn. I think what was also has also come up is that you know earth life has been really hard to go through in different ways, and it's been really traumatic. And many of us kind of got off off the path, or just felt like this was too much work to do, or kind of gave up hope um, in humanity because of humans being, you know, where we are right now. And the message that kept coming through is we need to step it up. It's time to do the work. And whoever's coming your way, asking to learn or asking for the work, we need to be in full service at this time. And that means changing the money structures. They really want us to get okay with bartering, um, to get okay with trading, to make different payment plans, and to be super flexible because people are ready. Um, of course, we need to be able to eat. We need to be able to pay for our bills and all that kind of stuff, but to handle each, each client, each group um, in a way that is unique, you know, to the needs of that group and to the needs of the facilitators. So, um, so that's why I started doing this embodied light course that I've been teaching. I, I did the pre-recording. We meet um, and we do the attunement. It has a Reiki base to it, like in the sense that there's an attunement and a transfer. But this way, people can do the work. There's a book that goes along with it. Um, it's totally donation-based, both levels. But this is, I wanted to evolve the practice of Reiki so that it wasn't just for practitioners. Because I would find people would do the level one of Reiki, and then they would never do a self-healing self treatment, or they had no intentions of working with clients. So I wanted to make this packaged in a way that speaks to people and their spiritual growth. And they have the option of working with with clients if they want, but this is really about us becoming light and transforming the parts of ourselves that are afraid, the parts of ourselves that are shadowy, and really bringing them up to the light to be loved and honored and healed. Um, and I think there's many healers that learn like attunement process that they never really attune other people. And it is so important to start share this light and share the frequency and actually start to get out of the closet as a somebody that awaken in from different level and not be afraid of that. I also want to share that a lot of information people get in those times during the night in dreams time. And I feel like it's really important to work with your dreams right now, to write them down, to ask, dream, to ask to remember before you go to sleep, to ask to be woken up after that information is coming forward. We'll be able to write it down. So if you put intention before you go to sleep and you ask, wake me up when I'm after the message or after so I can remember, they will wake you up. Mm -hmm. They will wake you up and it's okay. <laughs> it's good. And just I'm smiling because I'm remembering my dream last night. My husband brought all the horses in the house. I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, yeah, here's a nice bed for them. I'm thinking, what? <laughs> Who knows what that means? But um, mm -hmm. yes, dreams, they're so important. For the longest time, I know I wasn't remembering mine for a while. And some of my clients were feeling the same way. And some of the information I got in my sessions was sometimes the, um, the interaction and, and the thing that happens is so far past our reference point of being a human, it's very difficult to bring back what actually happened in, in your nighttime experience. But if you make a good point about intending to remember, because then your, all of yourselves can work towards bringing you the information in a way that you can comprehend. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I also want to say that this energy that is coming is coming with intelligence. So, it's try to bring information and then our mind and our system can basically translate it not correctly. Like it doesn't have to, it doesn't always integrate 
in the right way that they meant to, for example. And uh, that we had a session with somebody that the energy wasn't integrated right. So when we did the session with him after the last wave, they basically did another integration for the information that tried to come mm -hmm. before. So this is why I feel like more of meditation practice and more of the cleaning of the energy field because the fear will trigger maybe images that are not what they meant to or maybe if you have energies in you that are like affecting you, they would manage to kind of make this information not clear. And so I encourage people to just also um, know that it's not, a, not everything is exactly as it seems, even if they received an information, maybe there's mistranslation and there's more clarification that you can do with the process of tuning in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, meditation is so, so, so important. And this is why in the, I feel like so many people are turned off to meditation because they think they have to be a certain way or that their mind has to be totally silent or they have to look a certain way or have certain conditions. And so that's why when I'm working with people that we really find a meditation practice that works well for them, that looks like their unique style so that, you know, more people can tune into their, to their intelligence and receive information. I also want to say that I say there's so many ways to meditate. People can make art, people can go dance, people can go sing, people can go run, people can go swim, people can go take a bath. Like, do what really each one knows how he can connect with himself. And that's what's important. How you can like source. connect with the source. Yeah, of, yeah but <laughs> just like coming, like slowing down and, and feeling yourself and getting to like um, take the time for yourself. That's also like where you can just uh, feel more the meditation. And I want to remind that the, the practice of meditation is practice of focus. They also said that when the energy is so strong, it's feel that it's hard to focus. Um, so maybe this is why it's important to, to do an exercise of focus during this time. And the idea of meditation is to return to one thought. For example, it can be one image or one sound or, one, or just the sense of the breath, if you focus on the breath as a tool. And the idea of coming back to one thing, coming back to one thing, no matter what you're thinking, or what kind of wave you start to like drift on, you come back to like, okay, no, I'm gonna go back to my, my heart. I'm gonna go back to my third eye. I'm gonna go back to the ground. Mm -hmm. um, so this a little tool to understand how easy it is and there's nothing that you can do right or wrong. It's just a practice. It's just a, an experiment that you can play with. Mm -hmm. I also wanna to speak to the value of working with a quantum healer multiple times. Um, the value of having a second session, a third session, you know, having your time to integrate in between. But I'm sure you're finding with some clients that it's, it goes deeper or you get more or they're more ready or there's just so many reasons why. How, what are you seeing when you're working with people? Yeah, well, <clears throat> as many of you know, uh, those of us who are trained by Dolores Cannon, she pretty much had, you know, zoned in and, and taught her method that, you know, one session was all you would need. But quite frankly, Dolores kind of came up with that because of the way her practice was. Yeah. Meaning there were hundreds and hundreds of people who wanted a session with her. So she ended up just doing one because that's all she could do to get as many people in. And what she found to her amazement was many of them achieved amazing, remarkable results in just one healing. So she said, well, that's the way I'm going to teach my method. But that does not mean that you can't do this more than once. And many of us have done this multiple times. And you never know, one session may just be you know, a, an introduction or a, a breaking through in a, in a big way and subsequent sessions can be a deepening and a, a, a very rich experience for clients. Yeah. 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 The same. I always find that there's um, deepening in the second one, more information and bigger healing happening. I also find that, um, you know, Dolores didn't do anything to help people integrate the session. And I do feel that sometimes people awaken very bigly, get quite confused after that, and they need some help integrating the materials. And 
And I feel that it would be nice to create some, this is why we did the mentorship, because then we can meet the next week or two and then talk about it and then do another small session and then do another one later on and do another session, but talking and integrating the information and translating it into your daily life and making the new choices that they suggest that you'll do and follow, because it can be scary to follow this choices and we went through this path as well receiving information that we needed to go to certain <laughs> locations make ceremonies and travel like that and it was scary and weird and we just needed to trust but we had each other so it was easier and some people don't have that community or people that they can um share it with and um, i had many people that show that they cannot speak about that with even their family they just had far out experience that they don't know how to share. So um, this is bringing up an important part that I think we need, we need safe places for people to come and to be and to be together and to speak out loud. It's really important that people give voice to their experience and that they're in a community that is interested in what they have to say. And so what they keep mentioning is that we need gathering events and they don't need to be super spiritual, super woo-woo. You don't have to do a whole bunch of ceremony. We just need to be together. And that it's through the merging of our auras, the vibing of our auras together, that we're supporting and letting each other borrow. Um, I think of it more as like, maybe I have certain strengths. And when I'm holding space for somebody, I'm allowing them to borrow my strengths for a little bit until they can have their own. Um, and so when we can create these containers for people, this doesn't have to be difficult. We don't have to feel isolated anymore. And unity is such a big part of what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. The other part that I want to bring up is that so many of us have, and Dolores had this too, of having, um, having centers, having healing centers and retreat centers for people to come and be. And, and what seemed to be in this future life that, uh, that our client was looking, looking at was that there, there was a lot less population on the earth um because we'll talk about that in a minute but um but that communities were pulled together um they were more unified and working really closely together so many of us have the dream or we felt like oh i just wish we had a place where we all could be together and what they said is that the resources and the land are going to start coming to us now so that we can implement those um those places as safe havens is what they called because we are about to go through um Purification. Purification. There, you know, some of us, some of the hum, some of us have decided that we're going to leave the planet as a group, and that was something that we all determined before we came into this life. And so we're being called to different areas to do different work or to do different things. Um, that does mean that coming up in the next few months, we are going to see more activity within the the shift of the crust of the Earth, which means more volcanic activity, more earthquake stuff. But I'm saying this also to say that when they said that when you are connected, when you're aligned, when you're in your state of trust, the earth, your feet won't even move, but you'll see it move around with other people. So what's really important, and this is a time of testing our strength, is how much do we pay attention to what's happening out there and how much do we pay attention to our heart and to our alignment with source and with this planet as we move through this. So even though things might be happening around the earth or even close to you, it's really important that we stay in alignment, stay in our clarity. It's okay if you wobble off a little bit, but just bring it back and um, trust. I want to say about it that just when you know now that, yeah, that can be an earthquake and many people can live together in one location. I think it just, while you know it and when now we, you're awakening, Death is not the end of everything and and that they chose this and that's okay. You don't have to feel the the emotional pain from that situation. You can actually like just send them love and bless them on their path, know that we're going on the right direction and we're moving on with this ascension process and it's not a bad thing that is happening, that it's really um they're talking a lot about that there's a lot of negative energy here that have to be cleansed and that's okay. It's good. So basically what they mentioned that they're also going to bring it on each other 
and this is how they live. Um, so if there's going to be chaos because the dark energy fighting with each other, um, it's okay, and they will live. Yeah. And yeah, it's important to trust that all's in divine order, even if it looks ugly. There's a place within dark. For I mean, all is from from source. All is beauty. All is light. Even if it looks ugly. Um, even if it looks dark. To know that even that darkness has a place within this uh, process and just to honor it and let it go. Another thing that's been coming up too, I had a client who is really new to this, or not even a client, this is just a person that messaged me, um, saying that, that she saw a dark energy, um, a malevolent energy. I'm trying to play with not just dark, like something that didn't feel good that was coming towards her. And she just, what she did was she, you know, dropped into her heart and she just sent light to it and just sent it away. So, again, these energies that some people might be seeing that might seem dark, might seem scary, they have no power over you unless you give power to it. And so it's important to raise your, keep your vibe up, you know, stay healthy, stay clean, stay clear. Because when we're in those compromised states, that's when those energies can connect to us or interfere with our with our vibration and so it's important to you know keep it up self-care is so 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 important and radical in our cultures right now i want to actually talk about entities and those kind of things because many people are having and we get a lot of many clients that we need to clear some energy forms entities people that didn't pass on and and what I found that also uh, people that opening their field by using a lot of alcohol or using different drugs that can open the field and they're basically not protected. That's times when entities can interfere more. Um, so I'm just the practice of closing your aura, the practice of being sovereign being and feeling what is yours and what is not is a practice that is really important to start discover more and and many people also going and receiving those entities in different surgeries or different things in in uh, hospitals when they're unconscious when they're when they're fainting when all those things near that's when you near death experiences when they leave their body then other join in when they come back and and it's just really important to like get to know that it's it's happening it's really happening it's happening a lot and you can take ownership on your body and you can ask them to live and you can do it. There's many ways to do it. Quantum healing is a great way. But if you will know other practices, just make sure to like get to know your own energy and what's not, what energy is not welcome in your body anymore. I had a really interesting experience yesterday because um, I went, I asked to speak to the subconscious and I knew right away my stomach was like, something's wrong here because I got like a pit in my stomach. Like the information coming through was a little salt. It was very salty. <laughs> it was kind of insulting to me at times. And I was like, wait a minute, what's going on? So I called in Archangel Raphael and we've been playing a bit with um, speaking directly to these um, with angels. So I asked to speak directly to Archangel Raphael through the client. And I was like, what's going on here? Like, this doesn't feel right. And he, he, was, he said, you're not speaking to who you think you are. And I was like, well, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and so what, what was told to me was there was a time, they called it the before, before creation, there was another creation. And they said that something happened in the before where all knowledge was wiped. They don't, they're not really sure exactly what happened but the fragments of information that were left were then placed with different souls who volunteer to carry that knowledge into this next creation. And her particular knowledge that she was carrying, they said the closest word that we have was sorrow. Um, and so she had been holding, they said it was a container. It wasn't an entity. It was a container that she had been carrying, but it was time for it to be released. It wasn't, she would act, it had been causing bulimia um, because it was like this hole that was in her. Um, that was never being able to be filled. So with the support of Archangel Raphael and Michael and her subconscious, um, we were able to release this energy. And then her subconscious wanted to talk, 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 talk. It was very nice and sweet. <laughs> but it's so cool. And, but, you know, it's kind of like we have to be on our toes when we're doing this work because there's so much that's 
being given to all of us now that's new that you know we didn't see coming um yeah many topics that are coming forward is about the creation of the earth now and the history that we have with the star beings and basically how they um I want to say, um, not manipulated, but yeah, worked with our genes or brought the animal when the, the earth was ready. I had a beautiful session with a woman that also had profound healing. She came with a walking stick to the session and she, while the interview, she laid on the floor and she barely moved. She couldn't, she already told me like, I'm feeling already like so grounded on the floor. We went to the bed and we, she was some, some ballistic, so she didn't remember anything that she said during the session. She saw from the creations, from the beginning of the earth, when there was only a little bit of um, animals, mostly in the water, and after she saw like the ships coming and dropping animals <laughs> to the land, and it was super, it was beautiful to see, and she was going up and down from the council to report the, how the earth is doing until the earth was ready for the humans and and it was really fascinating. I just wanted to say about her healing that they worked on her body and they repaired like her mind in the beginning, they really scanned all the body, repaired the tear in the stomach and after the session they told us to go and ground on the floor with barefoot, it's very important for her and we basically Walked, walked. We almost danced, and we started to dance on the rock next to my house. And she, she came was in like, she came walker. with a walk. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, it was so, really, yeah. And then we're getting this other guy that is also going deep that he doesn't remember anything, and he started to give us the information about the creation of the earth and the different beings, the collective that involve in creating the earth. So there's few beings that work as a collective. And so the mm -hmm. council and they're responsible for that. And this is also why it's important for us to co-create together. We should also work as collectives because when we work as a collective, we can co-create more. They, they do it the same. They are collective and they work together. And so we need to learn how to work together. It's really important. Um, May I ask you something since you're, you're saying about working together, do you all, um, do you both do sessions, both of you with the client at the same time? <clears throat> I mean, is that not at the same time? Not at the same time, just sometimes. Okay. It depends. Just sometimes, yeah. We work with somebody together when we feel that there's a lot of information that we want to enhance the energy and uh, that we have more questions. We work good together. Um, and I don't know, there's magic when we're doing things together as well. He asks but, questions that I wouldn't even think to ask or, you know, so it's nice to have that. Yeah. But most of our work is done one-on-one. -on -one. Yeah. Um, we've had a, somebody ask if we would both be there, but it still feels really good to have that one-on-one -on -one connection so that someone can feel really open and have that space to be really focused on. Yeah, and if there's need and if there's interest, then we find time to work together. Uh, it's just we don't have all the time to do all, everything I, together. I'm just so <laughs> curious because, you know, after doing this work for 10 years now, I am more and more interested in um, the connection between the facilitator and the client, the energetic thing that happens. You know, all of a sudden, sometimes you can just feel it. You know, you yeah. just feel it. Whoa. You know, you can feel it come in the room. Sometimes it's early on in the session and uh, sometimes it's later. But my question about working together was, <clears throat> so is that double when you guys work together? <laughs> <laughs> it seemed like it should be. Um, well, because how I look at it is like usually Ron and I are doing sessions at the same time anyway in other rooms, whether it's online. So it's like we're so in our home, we could do, you know, two, sometimes more sessions in that day because we're, we're really so committed to this work right now. We're like, we're making ourselves so available for people. Um, so sometimes there's, it's just not even possible for us to work together because, you know, the other's working with other clients. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think something else I want to talk about is like, we've been, we've been starting to have this information transcribed because it seems like we're getting like a galactic history and we're putting together a book. Um, we've been getting different big events that happened 
and I really want to empower all of us that are getting this information to start putting it together in books because we are, we are bringing back our history that has been wiped from this planet from different institutions. We are bringing back our awesome galactic history and um, different parts of things that have been, been manipulated for the purpose of, you know, promoting certain agendas. And it's really important that we bring our awesome history out and let, you know, get it out in whatever formats and whatever ways that we can so that people can understand that we are so much bigger than we can ever imagine. And we have so much more power than we could ever imagine. And as we say yes to our power and yes to our divinity, there's nothing that we can't do together. Um, mm -hmm. I feel called to talk about, about the volunteers. They mentioned that they're taking care of us so much and they always, we always, even if we feel that we lack, we don't have enough money right now or we're going through really intense emotional or different experiences, a lot of them volunteers that feel kind of lost some of them even want to leave the planet. They have some memories of other places and they're just down with this earth a lot. We have many clients that try to commit suicide, want to commit suicide right now. Even like we're getting all this information and we do trust a lot of the bigger picture. So you're like, so if that's what's going, why do we even need to be here? Why do we need to continue suffering here? We just want to leave this place. Or people that had out body experiences and they feel the euphoria and the love when they're not in the body. So there's a big reason for it. It's we still have a lot of work. We still have to stay here. We still, um, it's still, they're going to be right back if they're going to live. And so it's not, they don't even have a way to escape it right now. It's just like, let's just hold on, hold on a little longer and connect with somebody that can give you a hug. It's going to be okay. And trust in knowing that we've all been, this is for every human, but especially for the volunteers, we've always been supported. We've always had enough. Maybe we had to go through a period where we had so very little so that we could learn something, but even that was being held by grace. Even that was being supported. And we've always had enough to, to live and to grow. And so this fear of not having enough resources, this fear of not having enough people, you know, community or friends or any of those lower chakra things really need to be looked at and cleared so that we can ascend into our higher states of being. But if we have the weight of those fears of not enough, lack, it's just going to weigh us down and it's going to be more difficult because I think that it's going to show up faster and faster in our reality as things, as things go. So just trust so much that you're loved. Yeah. Do you have something you want to say, Kendall? I'm just enjoying all of your different stories and just kind of astounded at your um, ability to, to do so many sessions. I mean, we didn't talk very long ago and you've already had all these other sessions doing <laughs> and, and sessions. It's, it's wonderful. Um, I'd like to know a little bit more about how, um, how you help people integrate afterwards. You, you mentioned like a mentorship program and helping what are some of what are some of the typical ways you help someone yeah. integrate some information after a session? So one is a little bit holding a practice of meditation and then uh, continue talking about the life. Like, you know, people go on, they have their choices to do about their work, about their relationships, about so we hold space to continue, have the dialogue about how they're integrating that. Um and then we can use the keyword again and see if there's any advice from above mm -hmm. about what they have. Because in a session, and um, maybe people don't know about that, we basically can put a keyword that when we use the keyword, you go right into trance and you can connect again with the higher self and to get more information. So it's basically the next yes. session process. It doesn't have to take so long. Like a session normally takes around four to five hours this when we put the keyword right into it mm -hmm. so so when, then we do just the talk and then we put in the end the keyword we get more information mm -hmm. and then there's that um yeah the way that i'm um like because i come from an energy healing background before i came into quantum healing um practices so mine 
like I, I have them doing daily meditation and daily self healing about, you know, 15 to 20 minutes, you know, of a practice every day. Um, we have a few books that we're reading um, to start to work with light and to start to work telepathically so we can be projecting images of what we want happening. We have a few different, um, like e I consider each time that we're working together a separate ceremony. So we start with prayer, we invite supportive energies, um, and then I might, we might have a topic. So we might learn different pranayama practices, different breathing practices, um, different self-healing practices. Reiki is a big part of it. Um, mm -hmm. We use our voice. I think the voice is a big thing. So I have them stand. We have an affirmation practice that I have them facing the four directions and reciting different affirmations in each direction. Um, yeah, there's so much. Yeah, I feel like it's also building up with each person depending on where he at and what they want and what's going on. So it's really, it's personal thing. It's a, this way it's more like a mentorship and it's building shaped up and built for each one depending on what's going on. And helping them find their message. Like everyone came in with a different piece of this puzzle. And I feel like the focus is really empowering them, coaching them through their blocks and getting them out there, like creating their events now and creating, you know, engaging in clients now, using social media now, all of this. Yeah. So that they can, like, I feel like I'm, um, I'm really drawn to people that want to be leaders that want to make big change. And, um, but they also realize that they have some things that are keeping them from being on their highest timeline. So that's the focus for me during that time is to help them go up on their timeline so that they can be at the most optimal, you know, vibration and and vantage point of their life. Yeah. Working with leaders and teachers, people that comes with many contact with many people. It's so they can make so much impact. Uh, so it's so amazing to put them online and to like put them in their power because uh, you see how they affect so many right away. Um, yeah. So have you guys had something that's been happening with my own clients recently is an interesting, um, seems to be surfacing of memories that are either from other timelines or other aspects. And mm -hmm. it can be a little disturbing to some people who aren't used to this idea. I, you know, one of the messages I got recently was a woman who's like, I'm suddenly having this, this memory of these two major car accidents I was in, but I was never in major in many, any major car accidents as, as according to my family, but I have vivid memories of them. And she's rather disturbed now to me. And, and even before doing a session, this, this is telling me, this is, we talk about being multidimensional. This is what being multidimensional is, right? Another aspect of her did have those experiences and it's coming through into um, her realm of, you know, knowing right now. And, and she can maybe per possibly learn from them without having to experience them. Have you had any of those kinds of things happen in your sessions? Not exactly like that, but we do have parts of ourselves that can be hurt in other aspects of ourselves, and then they can affect us right now with the same kind of pain or the same kind of injury in the same location. Um, Especially if they're parallel lives that are happening yeah. at the same time. Yeah, that's what I found as well, that the parallel life can really affect you like in a certain location. I even learned about myself that one aspect of myself is hurt in another place. And I have the capacity to, through connecting to source, to send light to my other part, to try to heal that part while, mm -hmm. and then it also will affect my pain. I had a really interesting experience for myself. Um, I heard about the timeline thing. It was still kind of new for me. And then, so I made an appointment with somebody and then for the following day and two hours later I um, you know got on zoom and was like hey how come you're not on the call and I thought that I had an entire day where I had slept ate went to sleep did things and it was the next day it had only been two hours <laughs> like, I'm not like that. Yeah. <laughs> and I, I want to share about that I have a client that just told me that she was driving a car and she was about to reach somewhere and to she thought she was going to miss the exit and then she I think something happened she missed the exit she was frustrated and, and then she was 
something happened. She went in a split of a second to an earlier in the road. Oh, wow. And like she was all this time and suddenly she, she closed her eyes, she opened, she was confused for some time because somehow she was in a different location. She was earlier and then she was able to take the exit. Mm -hmm. I feel like in the same way that could be like um, if somebody's going having an accident, went back to a different timeline when he doesn't have the accident and continue on the path, just relating to your story. Mm -hmm. um, this is also bringing up um, a thing that came in a session about the timelines of getting to the new earth. They, they were saying that there's many different timelines and there's actually many different new earths and that we have a choice, you know, of which one we're going to. Um, Cause I had some information come through about another um, planetary body that would be passing through our solar system that came up in two different sessions but it doesn't seem to be coming up in other people's sessions and it hasn't come up many times in mine. So I asked again, I was like, is this thing really passing us by? And they said, for some people, they will experience that on their timeline. Um, but for others, they won't be experiencing that. So I think there's just so many, it's like, it's the biggest event in the universe. Of course, they want to have many different versions of awesomeness that we're going to create. It's like, how many variations can we make on this thing? Yeah. As an improv, improv, improvisational dancer, somebody who grew up with improvisation and dance, I can see how much fun it would be to just improvise it and see how many ways it can go. How many ways can this performance show up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's some really great news um, for people to keep in mind. These different timelines, these, you know, you... Yes, we want to connect with other people. Yes, we want to explore with other people. Yes, we want to share this kind of information. But everything comes from here. Every, everything that's in your reality comes from here. It's a projection of here. It happens here. You're the creator. It's all unique to you. And you can't look to somebody else's experience yeah. to decide what yours is going to be. Because we're, not just, we're just not built that way. We are all incredibly unique. And how boring it would be if, if we all were like robots or cookie cutter machines or, you know. So keep that in mind as we share all of this different information. We share it to kind of assist you in a way to give you an idea of the possibilities and the different things that are going on out there. But none of this is a recipe or an absolute fact for what's going to happen for you. Yeah, I think that's so important because I know... You know, Allison released her beautiful information and, you know, it was, it was just a little different, you know, and some people did experience what, what came through in that session for her and some people didn't. And I think it's really important that we have like, that we keep this openness, you know, everyone's experience is going to be different. And, um, yeah. you know, even us, we've been getting dates and times of things, which is really kind of like, you know, to say that it's going to happen on this date and this date is like a bold move maybe, but we can only relate the informa relay the information that we're getting. So, you know, we're all going through this and learning. We're like having the experience and having to communicate it to others so that they can understand it at the same time. It's not like, you know, we've been doing this for 30 years and so we're telling them what Ascension is. It's like, well, I just had an upgrade. I need to tell people about it. Like, <laughs> like and find the language for it and so I think what's so important is just to keep that vibe high, as high as you can, to, to let go of, the, like Dolores would say, let go of the karma, let go of those patterns of fear, and, um, and just stay in that alignment, and all that is good will come to you, you know? Hey, as long as we're mentioning Dolores again, let's talk about what's happening Sunday. So coming up here this Sunday, April 15th, it's Dolores Cannon's birthday. And our community has decided to create Worldwide Regression Day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The first yeah. annual, we want to do this absolutely every year. And we actually, the, the idea came not very long ago. So we haven't had time to uh, to make it a giant giant thing this year but i bet it will be next year but you two are going to participate um yeah. this year this coming sunday are you not yeah we're gonna do um an online uh regression we call this the quantum soul journey um we but it's still dolores's method with a couple little things in there 
So that's going to be from 3 until 5 on Sunday, the 15th. You can message us to get the event. We haven't put the event up yet, but it's from 3 to 5, and it's going to be online with Zoom. You can join on Zoom. We're on uh, PST. We're Pacific Standard Pacific, Time. Yeah. yeah, West Coast. West Coast Time. That information will also be up on our page, quantumhealingpractitioners.com backslash WRD. We already have almost 20 different people doing events, including Allison Co., including uh, Pamela Erlin. Allison's actually doing a BQH script, um, so I'm very excited about that one that I put together not too long ago. And Pamela is doing a quantum alchemy version of a regression. So (laughs) there's so many different practitioners um, offering these events, both live and in person all across the world. And if I may, I'd like to take this opportunity just, just to say to those of you who've never experienced any of this before, because I'm getting so many questions. I'm actually having people send in their own personal questions to me (laughs) for these group regressions. So let me, let me talk a little bit about what a group regression is. So a facilitator will lead you on some sort of journey and it has, it can have any flavor. It can have variety of things. You know, Ron and Michael will be doing something completely different than Allison and completely different than Pamela. And you will listen to them and they will bring their energy and their, uh, Uh, induction and their suggestions to you with a whole nother group of people, maybe hundreds, if not thousands across the world at the same time. So you're connecting with all these amazing energies and the intention of, of exploring and healing. And you bring your own intention, you bring your own questions kind of to yourself. That's kind of what a group regression is. We don't, ask your questions to everybody. We don't take questions or anything like that. This is a led event by a leader and then individual experiences all at the same time. And that's what a group session is all about. A one-on-one quantum healing session is something completely different. And that is where there's a dialogue and, um, and personal questions are shared with facilitator, etc. So some of the, it's kind of surprised me how many emails I've gotten with people sending in their their questions, very personal questions to <laughs> these group regressions. And bless their hearts, they're just seeing it as an opportunity to experience something they've not experienced before. And it made me really realize, you know, we have to do a little better job of talking about what a group regression is. Yeah, yeah. But I also find that it's very important to make a list of questions no matter what, because what I found with my work, even when I'm making a list of questions, that the information can come to me from many other ways too. And suddenly, like, I will have the aha moments and the information will come or the synchronicity that will bring me the knowledge. So making a list of questions is always good to have. And when you can also put the intention before you go into this quantum session uh, as a group and maybe your guides hear you and will, they will give you the information when they will have a moment. Because in a, in a group regression, we're going to do also another moment that you're going to have in the first time you're going to experience different events in your past life or different experiences that they want to show you, your guides and your higher self. And after that, we're going to do another session that is to meet your spirit guide and to get information from him and to receive healing from him. So and then maybe you'll have the opportunity to ask yourself your questions and to listen and to write about it. Everyone's going to have time to journal, to write uh, in the information that they get. And maybe we'll give a little opportunity to a little to sharing if there's going to find some time for it but Mm -hmm. just a little bit well it sounds like everyone can join it sounds like the timing has gone in a way that they can go to multiple of these events in one day it can be a whole sunday (laughs) absolutely absolutely. it's going on all over the world with the you know the west coast is going to be hopping with you and allison first um, there's actually some questions over here because I did finally get the Facebook thing to be working over here on my other computer. So thank you, you early watchers, for letting us know that it was all working all right. Um, I also want to, before you say that, I want to highlight that that is also a new moon on the 15th. Uh, mm-hmm. And it's also the, supposedly the date uh, when these, this next wave of energy is supposed to start coming from the sun. It's a potent day transformation. <laughs> How perfect is that? <laughs> Yeah. yeah, that is wonderful. I'm so glad that you uh, you made sure we got that in there. 
Um, there's a couple of questions here I want, uh, before we get too far gone, because there's a lot of people watching this right now. Fun. There's one question, people are wondering, is physical death necessary to go to the new earth? Have you had clients ask that question? What, what do you think? I think it really depends what you agreed to do before coming here. Um, some people will experience physical death for sure to move on and some uh, will not. We had few, few um, that have been told that they'll be picked up by ships mm -hmm. and going to uh, in between station to get the upgrades of the body. They call it midway station. Midway station that basically then they're going to do the repairs that the body in order to hold the frequency of the earth and then they're going to be dropped on the new earth. And some of us will be shedding our physical bodies and simply, simply, simply uh, wonderfully be in our light bodies <laughs> and be leading people from, that's what they said, that we'd be shedding the physical body and being here on earth in our light bodies to guide. Um, so I'm excited for that time. Yeah, that will be fun. <laughs> That's, that's really wonderful. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people here are talking about some other things, some, some of the centers, etc. You know, I started hearing about this idea of, I want to build this center, I want to build this center. And that, that started coming out years and years ago. It's interesting, because I wonder, there's a few people who've built the centers, and then they couldn't make them work financially. And I've thought about it and thought about it and thought about it. And I think they were just early precursors to this idea. We all so want this. We want this thing. But maybe, you know, in a different kind of setup and system than the, the financial monetary one we have right now. What do you guys think about that idea? We kind of, like, when we created the plans for our center, we, we kind of had this base of, of these workshops that we wanted to be leading and facilitating and having like a longer process. So it'd be kind of semi-residential for some people and then facilitators would be living there longer. Maybe that'll change, but we wanted to diversify the income in different ways, um, whether it be through ways of bartering through the community, um, whether that community also becomes a maker station for different products and different medicinal goods or different things that can then be sold within the local community, or if there was an online database or, of some kind. We have a pretty... Can I say yeah. something about yeah. I feel like what you ask about those centers, it's what I found and what they just told us actually, because we also we have the information that we need to build up the center in the future and we kind of trying to understand how it can be done and who. So what they mentioned to us, it's about the collaboration again, that when you, um, you need to come together with the, the people that also receiving the same download of, and then together you make it. And it's about unity, it's about collaboration. So yes, many centers are happening. It might be that it doesn't work out because they did it just singly, because they had the money, they couldn't build it up, but they didn't make it with the community, or with the amount of people that are actually, um, you know, the constellation that we agree that we're gonna to work together to do it. So we still need to come together to do it. If you've got this download that you need to build a center and you, and that's what you want to do, and that's your path. So come together with others and, and make it with other people. Don't try to just pop a center by yourself. When I asked about, um, you know, what's the next step, they responded with the question of, well, who do you want to work with you? And so I think it's like a matter of us cleaning it up. And then the other thing that they said is that over these next few months, the money doors will be opening for um, all of oh. the centers, but especially for these centers, that there's some other things that are happening with the investors or whatever, that there's some timing things that are happening here, that the money, the, the money, the land, the resources, all of that is coming. It just has, you know, a few things had to be lined up first. Um, so like we did this big plan and we just kind of have it sitting there waiting Wait. for the right time to implement it. So yeah. Yeah. Well, I love that idea. You know, we, we try to have an online community of practitioners on the original support forum community and quantumhealingpractitioners.com, but we want to support these 
actual physical interface places because that's important, you know? I mean, it's important that we can talk to people across the world like this because if it wasn't for this kind of interface, we wouldn't be doing this. Mm -hmm. But it's also important that you don't hide away only with devices and screens. You need to get out and do stuff. I, you know, going back to even what you were talking about earlier, Michael, about it doesn't have to always, it could be bowling for goodness sake. It could be having a picnic or going fishing or, you know, um, you know, my son plays kickball and I keep thinking, my God, would I love to play kickball. Oh, you know? <laughs> Does that sound like it fun? Like fun yeah. And we need to have more fun in our lives and, yeah. and, and more laughter and more connection in that way that isn't, um, you know, um, it's, it's kind of such spectator stuff where you're just kind of quiet and, 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 injecting something you know it's more one-on-one -on -one and um you yeah. know an active kind of connection oh i think it's, it's so true it's like we really need to like call up our friends and say hey let's go play kickball are you feeling weird i'm feeling weird let's go play kickball <laughs> let's go I love it. together yeah yeah it's I so love it. yeah no one around here wants to play kickball <laughs> My son says, come down to Austin, I'll play kickball with you, but uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and actually, you know, that kind of brings up a point, because one of the other <clears throat> statements um, on our Facebook feed over here, people are talking about, you know, no one around them um, speaks in this way, or understands them, or whatever, and when I was first, first starting to wake up, that's exactly what it seemed like to me as well. But now everybody in my life is part of my tribe and absolutely, absolutely awake. And even my family who were kind of like, wow, I'm not sure what you're doing, but okay. I mean, none of them are actively against it or anything. They've all woken up too. They really have. They're all, they're all here now. Yep. So believe me that that is, it's not that you have to disown your friends and disown your family. Um, you just have to not, well, you might consider not hiding the fact that you are expanding and opening up to this new way of living because being an example helps other people wake up too, including your family or your friends that, you know, you may want to keep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had the same process with my family, my just like expanding and sharing a little bit <laughs> more and, and just like bits by bits and eventually you're able to have this and then they get curious and then maybe you can make an A. We, I just, my family just visit me not here in the U.S. and we <laughs> had the opportunity to like create some event that they maybe will have experienced themselves more. Uh, yeah, yeah, and just like so important. It's just take time, but it is so important and it is possible. And I want to offer, so I work with my um people that I'm training to do light work, they, we do a meditation where we connect upward energetically and we reach golden threads out to connect to others that are, that either they have information for us or we have information for them or that we would make a, you know, have a nice relationship, a nice friendship, and then pulse your heart energy out along those lines and call them to you. And they'll show up. It's going to be in the grocery store. It's going to be walking down the street. It's going to be, you know, just, you can call them to you. We have, since the, the I started on the 22nd of February, we're much more telepathically connected now. And telepathy um, is much more than what we saw in the movies. There's so many different ways to have a telepathic connection to somebody. They did mention, though, in the yesterday in the session, when they actually explained about telepathy on the new earth, they mentioned that there was a moment that the group wanted to separate they said you need to say the full name of the person in order to right. connect him. So I would try it here mm -hmm. too now. Yeah, it's fun to start playing. We can pulse out our love and our light and we can ask for the, you know, the most appropriate relationships to come to us and we can start to work that way. Yeah. And you can also just put an energetic seed and this seed will affect and will grow in its own time. But just putting the seeds thinking that your word of awakening on whatever you share is just a seed for them. And then life will happen and that will unfold for them. Uh, but your, sometimes your job is just to plant a seed. And that's important. Yeah. Very good. All right. 
All Correct. right, guys. Well, do you have anything else? Have we gone through your list? <laughs> we, we went through the list. We got the important stuff out. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, we've been on for about an hour and 15 minutes now, so it's probably about a good time to wrap up. Yeah, yeah. What I want to talk about, though, before um, we sign off today is that we've been working hard on the Beyond Quantum Healing course on, in our community, and we had kind of the beta course going from late January, actually, all the way to March 30th, and we put that on hold, and we are now taking all the information, all the webinars, all the the collected information of, of what we've been doing and we're putting it on a proper teaching platform so beyond quantum healing the proper course that anybody can take is coming soon you know I, I hate to put a date on it because you know it's in production but it's going to be real uh, real soon that we can offer it to all of you out there in the public and if you've been wanting to learn quantum healing and you've found other courses kind of prohibitively expensive you're going to like um, our price point when we get it out there for you you can keep an eye on the developments and how that's progressing by going to quantumhealingpractitioners.com and clicking on the BQH or Beyond Quantum Healing tab. There's going to be information there. You can check that out at any time you want, quantumhealingpractitioners.com, where you can find our friends on um, there. You can find me, and you can find a quantum healing practitioner near you or online because Beyond Quantum Healing says you can do this work just like this using yeah. Zoom. And we're all going to get together on Dolores's birthday here uh, coming up Sunday. I hope those of you out there who are watching, whoop, had a little friend <laughs> fly by there, uh, will join one of us or maybe several of us on Sunday. Michael and Ron, it's always a joy to mm -hmm. talk to you. Yeah. Thank you so much for joining me on this Sunday and, and making me feel better. I've been a little under the weather myself, still working on this. Still working on, you know, uh, I guess burning off more layers of stuff <clears throat> like a lot of us healers have been doing this year. And uh, hopefully we're all going to feel better after the big party on Sunday. <laughs> so all right. So you guys, thank you, so <laughs> thank you so much. You can find um, also Ron and uh, Michael at transformotion, right? Yeah. Dot org. Org. yeah. Dot org. Transformotion. Dot org. That's what uh, I'm doing. Yeah. I have a little surprise. We just had a few days ago um, a session where Dolores, we asked to speak with Dolores and she came so clear and so powerful. And I'm just going to post it online on her birthday uh, on our YouTube channel. I'm just going to need a moment time to edit it and to put this section. So on her birthday, we're going to put a little channeling from her. Super I love it. I love it. I think I have. I think I have a blog post that has a Dolores message that will also go up that day. Perfect. Thank you. So much. <laughs> Looking forward to that. All right. Well, thank you all who are watching us live, and those of you who are going to catch this later, either on the Facebook that's going all the way out to the world, or on YouTube later. Thanks, everybody. Blessing. Till next time. Bye bye. See you on Sunday, everybody. Yeah. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thanks. <laughs>